Recently, Lazy Masquerade here on YouTube put out a video where he basically created an iceberg of childhood traumas. It was quite fun and it brought back a lot of memories. So in the spirit of Lazy Masquerade's video, I put together my own list because stuff kept coming to me while I was listening to his video of the things that scared me as a child to the point where I still remember it to this day. So I thought it would be fun, like completely lighthearted, kind of go through my list and see if any of these strike a chord with you. So I have it separated into movies, shows, and then other. So some movies that I remember really scaring me uh, were Secret of Nim. I can't really remember exactly why it scared me. It's just I associate that movie with fear. Now another movie that scared me was Once Upon a Forest. Has anyone else seen this movie? It's about these little like woodland creatures and pollution. So there's this part in the movie where a gas truck has an accident and they crash on the highway. There's like a skull and crossbones on the back of the truck. And when it falls over, it starts to leak this gas out and it leaks into these little woodland creatures' homes. And since it kind of hovers a little higher than the ground, it kills the parents. And I think maybe it doesn't kill the children because they're short, but it kills everyone's parents. It's pretty messed up. Speaking of movies, you know that sound at the beginning of movies when it shows like the THX surround sound or THX sound or whatever, and it's this like crescendoing. Mm -hmm. My mom said that that always scared me as a kid, and that's so funny because I didn't even remember. That has scared me my whole life. I just still mute it every time it comes on to this day. I've mentioned this in a video before, but E.T. I saw E.T. in 1995 when I was seven years old, and that was the last time I've ever watched it. He's hideous. He's an abomination. He terrifies me. I, can't, I don't want to look at him. I don't want to hear his little voice. Mm, I can't believe everybody likes him, but... It was featured in Lazy Masquerade's Childhood Trauma Iceberg, so I know someone else out there is disturbed by him. There was this movie that we rented, and it was a Disney movie, so we thought it would be cool. We were little. The movie was called Something Wicked This Way Comes. Does anybody remember this movie? I think it was about some kind of an evil carnival or something. And I, re I think there was like a part where everything was bugs or everything was spiders but the part that scared me the most was this guy he might have been the carnival owner guy and i don't even know if i imagined this or if this really happened in the movie but this is what i associate with the movie he was clenching his fist so hard that it started to split open on the other side <sighs> Another movie we rented was The Peanut Butter Solution. Have you seen that? I, I think it was supposed to be funny, but that movie traumatized me. It messed me up. It was like about this kid who goes bald or something and his friend creates this like glue. Is it made with peanut butter? I don't know. Creates this glue to get this wig to stick on the kid's head and then when the kid's playing soccer or something later, someone grabs his hair and like rips the wig off and there's like all these strings of glue and it happens in slow motion. I don't know why. It messed me up so bad when I was little. Like I felt betrayed by that movie. I felt like, why would that movie look good on the cover and then do this to me? There's this movie called Hug a Bunch, which I did talk about in my obscure childhood media video. Hug a Bunch had this really weird way of make, feeling so magical, being so appealing to me as a kid, but at the same time it was, it was repulsive and terrifying. And it's not just because the bad guy and the bad guy's world was scary, but these puppets were scary themselves. The fact that nobody else knew what the heck this movie was, there was this weird like loneliness to the fact that I was watching this, I don't know. I have really weird mixed feelings about Hug-a-Bunch. The Brave Little Toaster. 
I know one of y'all has seen The Brave Little Toaster. There are two parts in particular that stand out to me as being scary. One is when the vacuum sucks up his own cord and he starts like having a seizure. I have never been able to vacuum without thinking about that my whole life. And then the other part is when they're in the junkyard and these cars are going down this conveyor belt because they're going to be compacted. And so all these cars, and they're singing a song at the time, so all these cars are like singing about how they're about to die and before they go into this car share and get crushed into a little cube. Every time I drive by a junkyard, I think about that. So thanks, brave little toaster. The final thing I wanted to mention under the movies category is something that Lazy Masquerade mentioned in his video, and that was the movie covers that you would see in rental stores that traumatized you, even without seeing the movie. Most of the time I was intrigued by movie covers rather than scared, but there's two that I could think of that traumatized me as a kid, and one is Mars Attacks. That scared me. The, the cover of it scared me. I've never even seen the movie Aliens, man. I don't know. Why did I have this natural version to Aliens? I don't know. Maybe everyone does. And then the other movie, and it wasn't meant to be scary, this movie cover of Porky's. This lady is in the shower, and she's turning the faucet on, and there's a peephole, and there's this eye looking at her through the shower. And I think that was the first time where I realized, like, someone might want to spy on someone else while they're naked. And I, I don't know, I felt, um, like, threatened by that movie cover. Little did I know. Okay, let's move on to the next section, which is shows. Now, I didn't watch a lot of TV because we only had three channels because we had the antenna. Okay, you probably know this because I keep talking about it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the X-Files. Not the show. I've never seen the show. It is that theme song. I still can't listen to that theme song. That is terrifying. Who wrote that? I hope they received an award because that scares me to my core. <laughs> so next I want to talk about The Simpsons. I grew up on The Simpsons. I apparently had to take a little hiatus because I started acting like Bart Simpson, but mostly I grew up on The Simpsons because I am the same age as the show. There are two episodes that really scared me and they actually came later. You know, I was in like fifth grade or something, I think. One of them was the alien episode where Mr. Burns was an alien. I mean, we didn't know it was Mr. Burns. Homer meets this alien in the woods. That was messed up, man. That's so scary. I wasn't the same after that. And the other Simpsons episode that messed me up was the one where they excavated an angel skeleton. I don't know why that, <laughs> that hit me so hard. Like, maybe it's because angels aren't supposed to die. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but that really disturbed me. I wanted to give a shout out to Unsolved Mysteries. Unsolved Mysteries was mentioned, it and its similar shows, was mentioned on Lazy Masquerade's video. And my mom made me watch Unsolved Mysteries with her because she's too afraid to watch it alone. So ever since I was a little child, I was watching Unsolved Mysteries. And for some reason, I wasn't disturbed by that. Maybe it's because Robert Stack is just so comforting. But I wasn't scared of that theme song. My mom's terrified of that theme song. And I guess there were probably some little bits and pieces from those stories that stuck with me and kind of like shaped how I perceive my surroundings. But I kind of like fantasized about being on the show. I know that sounds so weird. But when I was a kid, I remember there was this one time, gosh, I must have been like four or five. <laughs> and I was in the grocery store with my mom and I was just pretending that I was on the show and I was pretending I was doing the reenactment. So in this imaginary reenactment, I was being chased. So I was running. I was running for my life down the grocery store aisle. And I guess I had my eyes closed because before I knew it, I had rammed into my mom's shopping cart. She doesn't know why I did it, but it's because I was pretending I was on Unsolved Mysteries. I was in junior high when Teletubbies came out, I think. Again, we only had public television. So I woke up one morning and I went and turned the TV on because I thought Arthur would be on and instead Teletubbies was on. 
and I watched it for a little while, and it, it's not that it, it disturbed me, but it like weirded me out. It weirded me out. And I just turned it off and walked away. But that does kind of stand out to me. I know some people like did get traumatized by Teletubbies. I think I was a little too old, but I remember being like uneasy. <laughs> the last little television example I want to share is actually from high school, probably ninth grade. No, it wasn't ninth grade. It had to be 10th grade because we had gotten satellite. So I spent a lot of time exploring satellite and there were a lot of channels that like my friends didn't have with cable. So there were all these channels I'd never heard of and nobody's ever heard of. And I had tech TV and I turned on tech TV and saw like there was an anime segment. It's called Anime Unleashed. So my first exposure to Anime Unleashed was, I turn on the TV and there's, there's this guy, he was like a robot guy, and he had a gun held to his head and he was screaming for his life and pleading and it just, it was so upsetting and then he got shot in the head and I, I just turned it off. And that's probably why I stopped watching Disney Channel before bed after that. <laughs> And I did end up going back to Anime Unleashed. I don't know what show that was. I wish I knew. I could probably find out. But I ended up going back to Anime Unleashed and watching like some of the other shows they would feature. But that was my first experience. Now let's move on to the last segment, which is other. First thing I wanted to share is when we were kids, my sister and I, we had this dress. Like first it was mine and then it was my sister's because I'm older. So it was this like white dress. It had grasshopper pictures of grasshoppers all over it. I was fine with the dress, but my sister became so this is really about her. My sister became traumatized by this dress. She was terrified of it. She didn't want to look at it, much less wear it. And I remember had this memory of it being in our closet and and her being afraid of the closet because that grasshopper dress was in there. And I really love that story. I wish I could remember more tales of me being terrified by an object for no good reason. Or terrified by like an area of the house or an area in the yard. Like I never had that sort of intuition, but even inanimate objects, I don't have memories of being afraid of them. Except for this one time I was spending the night at my friend's house and we convinced ourselves that one of our stuffed animals was alive. <laughs> We ended up like throwing him out into the hallway. But there is this one item. I was at my friend Sarah's house and I'm trying so hard to remember what exactly this was. But as far as I remember, it was like this little plushy spider that Sarah had. I think this was around Halloween. And the spider was on a string and you would like pull it and it would like crawl back up and it would play music. Whatever song this music would box was playing made me burst into tears like instantly and like Sarah and her mom were like w w are you okay like what <laughs> and I was just petrified I can't remember what the song was I don't know if it was from a certain movie or something but it was just it just creeped me out it terrified me and so I was afraid of that little stuffed spider I didn't know this was gonna be so long so and I know it's just me talking about myself but I'm sure some of y'all can relate to this. So I'm afraid of dogs. They just always bite me. I, one of my worst memories with a dog is my neighbors were apparently, I was in elementary school, my neighbors were apparently babysitting someone else's dog. And he was a big, big dog. And his name was Tip, because he had like a white tip of his tail. I don't think I'd had a bad experience with a dog yet, but when I met Tip, he jumped on me and he busted my lip. And that was just traumatizing. That was probably like the main thing that really made me afraid of dogs. Just like you're playing, you're out in the open, you are unarmed and there's a dog and you're like, hey dog, and then it hurts you. Just to feel so, like, again, vulnerable. More trauma. Okay, I don't like heights. And I want, I want to like heights. You know, but there's something in me. There's an instinct in the, in there that I just can't do heights. I I've tried the high dive. I've done the high dive three times. I kept thinking if I keep doing the high dive, eventually I'll like it. Wrong. And then 
I don't know if you have ever felt the pressure of riding a theme park ride. We live kind of close to Six Flags in Atlanta, so it would be like, have you been to Six Flags? Have you ridden this ride? And it was all, it was like the, ki the thing that kids are supposed to like. And if you didn't ride rides, you were lame. I've tried a couple rides, didn't like it. But one I tried was a, what is it called? I'm gonna put the name of it here, but it was one that would like shoot you up really high and then like you'd come down and it would shoot you back up again. I was like, I'm gonna try that and I'm just gonna be cool. I'm gonna be cool. Like we were on a field trip at school and we went there and I was in junior high and I was like, I can totally do it, it's fine. No, I was freaking out. I was screaming and like panicking and this stranger next to me was like, are you okay? Like, it just doesn't work. And even to this day, I can't do heights. So when my husband and I when on our honeymoon, we went to a water park and I was like, I'm gonna try one of those big slides. I'm sure I'll like it now. As soon as I got off that slide, I burst into tears. I can't. There's one video game that I can recall that traumatized me. When my sister and I were, I mean, I was like 12, so she was like nine. We rented Chrono Cross from the, from like movie gallery or whatever. So we put it in and like, the first cutscene involves a stab and a bloody knife. And we freaked out. We saw that bloody knife and we turned that thing, we turned that game off. That fear, I still remember. Like, it also kind of felt like we were doing something wrong. Like, we shouldn't be playing this game. This is mature. <laughs> Similar to the movie covers, I would also look at book covers a lot. I never read Goosebumps. I know, it's crazy. I was more of a Babysitter's Club kind of girl, or Boxcar Children, or American Girl. So I never read Goosebumps, but I did look at their covers a lot, and there's one cover that I just remember so perfectly, and being really scary, and that was the Sage, He's and Die cover, I think it was, with the family, the skeleton family having a barbecue. I was like, how can someone just write something like this? I was also afraid of a record cover. My dad had a lot of records. He has really good taste in music. And he had Boston records. And I don't know if they all have UFOs on them anyway, but I would look at this one that had a UFO on it. And it just, it scared me, but it was, I had conflicting feelings because it was such like a happy, like image, but it still was a UFO. So. And this, this is what a lot of like the kid shows and movies did to you. Like they brought a degree of comfort, but also made you really uncomfortable at the same time. So yeah, I just remember Boston really creeping me out. Bloody Mary. I first remember learning about Bloody Mary in third grade. I had this friend named Lauren and we learned like how you do it and everything. And I was just terrified. My friend Lauren was like too cool for school. So she, she was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it tonight. And I was like, oh my God. And then I'm just all night. I'm like, I wonder if she's done it yet. Like, I can't wait to ask her tomorrow. So I was finally like, did you do it? Did you do it? And she was like, nothing happened. I still wasn't less scared of Bloody Mary. I'm still a little scared of Bloody Mary. Like, I think, I think it could work. I think you could do it and it would work. You might have to, you know, make it a little more ceremonial. But I bet you could do something, get something to happen. I'm not going to. I was afraid of ants in pre-kindergarten. That's when I first remember getting bit by ants on the playground. And again, I felt very attacked. My mom said, if you keep moving, the ants can't get on you and they can't bite you. So the next day, I didn't play with the other children. I was too scared. I remember walking in a circle, nonstop, all recess, because I didn't want the ants to get me. And I was crying the whole time. And the teacher like tried to get me to like stop and go play, and I just wouldn't do it. And I, I also remember I had snacks in like a Ziploc bag, and I was crying while I was eating my snacks and walking in a circle. <laughs> Poor me, aww. I had a tricycle accident. I was riding it up the hill and I realized I just couldn't get all the way up. So then I started to fall backward, roll backwards down the hill. 
and I was like, I'm not sure what this means. <laughs> and after a while, I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And then I crashed into the gravel at the bottom, and I hit the back of my head. And I think that's why I don't like driving on inclines. Okay, my uh, people who were there for the 90s will probably remember the chain letters we used to get. And some of them were quite threatening. I remember chain letters just... Attacked is the word I keep wanting to use. Like, I felt attacked. But there was some chain letter that would show, like, this creepy girl, and she'd be like, My name is so-and-so, and I'm dead, and if you don't send this to 12 people, you'll see me at the edge of your bed tonight. <laughs> that was so scary. And the last thing I want to talk about is because Lazy Masquerade mentioned it in his video, and that is uh, weather alerts, that or emergency alerts, where it has that, like, awful electronic... Beeping. It used to come on and we'd be watching our TV and it was just such a terrifying noise and you just felt like under attack once again. And my dad had this weather radio that was a little little and silver and it had like a robot voice. <laughs> and I hated that thing too. <laughs> oh. Okay. That's all the childhood trauma I could remember. I hope this was fun. I hope it like brought back memories of your own in the most lighthearted way. So please feel free to comment below if you had similar fears or if you have remembered some of your own that you'd like to share. I know this video was kind of personal, but I hope it was still like watchable and fun. I just enjoyed Lazy's video so much. I kind of wanted to throw my own out there. That's it for now. Ciao!